Hi guys, it's Ugen. Welcome back to another video and another book talk. Today, let's talk about Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. One of my favorite books from last year, one of my favorite books from the author, and inspired of my project, May Perfect Murders. I will link up here the playlist if you want to check it, where I, let, I read the eight books featured on this book. Before I discuss this book with you, don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you like my content. It will help a lot to grow the channel and a little bit serve a little bit as motivation for me, so it'll help a lot. So. Eight Perfect Murders is a mystery thriller and we follow Malcolm who is the owner of a bookshop dedicated to books on that genre. Mysteries, thrillers, police, classics, you know, all that genre. While before he was an owner he worked there and he made a, a blog post putting eight books that he considered has the best or has perfect murders. Those books were The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie the Drowner by John Lee McDonald, um, Strangers on the Train by Patricia Highsmith, Double Indemnity by James Cain, Malice of Forethought by Franz Isles, The Red House Mystery by A. A. Mile, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, and Death Trap by Ira Levin. By Ira Levin. These are the eight books that are featured there. Beware, this book has spoilers for some of these books and especially to one more there is the murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie too. So beware, if you go to this book, if you want to read those books, read those books first. If you don't want, you can go definitely and you can watch my playlist here where I discuss the books and the murders. So, in the present day, Malcolm receives a, a, a visit from an FBI agent that someone is copycatting, copycatting, copycatting his list. Someone is using the list to kill using the books. So they start to make things as the ABC murders, to double indemnity, and he, sh the, the police officer, asks Malcolm help so she can, since he wrote the list and he knows the book, so he can help with the crime scenes, with the victims, and everything. And then comes the secrets. This book is full of secrets, it's full of twists and turns. I was amazed by the audiobook. I, uh, a lot of people didn't like it, the book. I loved it. I don't know, I was captivated from the beginning. Malcolm is such a character. I cannot say more because everything is a spoiler here. Everything on the book makes sense for me. Even the end. The end is perfectly fine. Ends in the perfect note and it ends on the perfect line with everything. During the book we're gonna get some flashbacks of Malcolm's life and those are important to assess his personality and to see how he is. But this book is about catching a murder so it's a murder mystery investigation so he's going with this FBI agent to some places, see the files, when another people get killed they are, he's called and then he starts to think they will consider me a suspect, I'm not a suspect, I just wrote the list. You see, and he starts to, because he has some secrets, to back off and to try to do his own digging because the man who is behind, the person who is behind this is interested in Malcolm in a way that he doesn't know until a point. So this book is just phenomenal. I really, really like the book. I read... Um, a Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson in this book up here. I really enjoyed it too, but I think it was a little bit over the top. This one felt a lot real. And after reading the eight books from that list, it'll make me appreciate more the work that Peter Swanson did with that book, creating the setting, learning about those crimes, learning about how to kill. Everything makes sense for me. I think the book is very captivating. Um, Malcolm is not definitely a likable character. Uh, it's definitely uh, an interesting character to assess uh, mentally and to follow as a character. Uh, everything that comes with the twists. One of the down points for me was a lot of names. I'm I'm bad with the, when the book has a lot of names so if you have problems with that maybe keep a list. I know there is a website that I found it really helped me. If you write Eight Perfect Murders, Peter Swanson character list, it appears the characters where they appear and the name in a little bit description and it helps you to refresh the memory. Who is this one? Who is really this one? And so it helps a little bit. But yeah, definitely it's one of my favorite thrillers. Uh, I think it's one of my favorites because it caught me everything off guard, you know? And for me, 
Card who read books that are a little bit more strange being caught in a book this off guard is totally amazing I totally recommend it's one of my favorite thrillers it oh I, I want to show you this but to be is making a huge face is because it's hot and the bed this must be hot so he's on the floor looking at us like this it's very cute uh, but yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite uh, books and one of my favorite authors now. I want to continue with his work. I know some of them are not very good. I have also read every last year. I have a review here, but it's definitely some an author that has a brilliant idea. Sometimes the execution flaws, but this one, I think the execution was really well done. The plot twists were brilliantly done. And the end for me, it's Cherry Top. So guys, this was my book talk for The 8 Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. Tell me in the comments if you read this book, if you want to read it, if you read any Peter Swanson's book, if you like this genre. Um, yeah, I post, don't forget if you leave this far to leave a comment, like and subscribe. And I post videos every Tuesday, Thursdays and Saturdays. And I see you guys in my next video. Bye.